Hello class, today we're going to be talking about the geological time scale. The geological time scale is broken down to many different parts. The first part of the geological time scale is known as the Precambrian. The second part is known as the Phanerozoic. The Precambrian simply just means before the Cambrian period, and the Phanerozoic means visible life, and we are living in the Phanerozoic right now. It's broken down into many different periods. The first period is known as the Hadean Eon, and this is when Earth started to form 4.5 billion years ago. The oldest rocks are known from this period, and this is one of the oldest rocks known from that time. This is called, this is from the Hadean Eon. This is when Earth really started to form, and this rock is known as the Acostanites. That is the oldest known rock on Earth's crust. There aren't a lot of rocks that date back from this period because Earth is very dynamic. It changes a lot, and they don't. And there aren't a lot of rocks on the Earth that are from this time period. The next period is known as the Archean. The Archean started around four, started about a billion years ago, about 1.2 billion years ago, and this is when we start to see when the Earth start, actually started to cool a little bit more. Um, we don't start to see a lot of life forms. We start to see a little bit of bacteria, but there are signatures of life from carbon and things like that that suggest that life may have started. Nothing complex as today is like humans or anything like animals or anything of that nature, but it does give us an example of life that actually started to form billions of years ago. The next part is known as the Proterozoic. The Proterozoic started about a billion years ago, and this is when we actually start to see some of the very first life forms started, um, started to appear in the fossil record. Some of the dominant animals or some of the dominant organisms that existed during that time were things called stromatolites. Stromatolites are fossils, which are the remnants of algae, mount, of algae mounds that existed a billion years ago. And this is one of those fossils. This is a piece called a stromatolite. This comes from Australia, and it's one of the oldest known multicellular fossils or animals that are made up of, or organisms that are made up of different types of cells that occur in the fossil record. And stromatolites occur very commonly, are very common in the fossil record during the Precambrian. The next is when we sat in during the Proterozoic. What we actually start to see is Towards we get into the Cambrian period, this is when we actually start to see animals that, or when we actually start to see things that really kind of resemble things like animals. Maybe not animals today, um, but things that are have like hard shells and very hard parts. And some of the first animals to develop those things are known as trilobites. Let's see here. Trilobites are some of the are very very dominant animals, and they occurred in the Cambrian period. This is a trilobite from Utah, and you can see it has kind of look, it kind of looks like a crab or a horseshoe crab. These animals made their skeletons out of hard parts. They made their skeletons out of a mineral called calcite and out of a material called chitin. And these are really well preserved as fossils because of what they were made out of. Trilobites were some of the first animals to appear that uh, actually made their hard parts out of calcium carbonate or uh, called calcite or something called chitin as well. They were able to help strengthen their skeleton or their exoskeleton. These are animals known as invertebrates. And we start to see trilobites really common in the Cambrian period. The next part is known as the Ordovician period. The Ordovician period actually had a lot, a lot of organisms. Trilobites were still very common, but they weren't as diverse as they were in the Cambrian period. We start to see actually large cephalopods. Cephalopods are things like octop octopi, squids, and cuttlefish that are living today. But cephalopods would have gotten really, really large. Um, this is a smaller version. They would have had a straight shell. The tentacles would have been pointing outward like this. And they would have had uh, a, a jet propulsion system to try to um, maneuver themselves through the water. This is a smaller version of a cephalopod fossil from Africa, but cephalopods can get quite large. Some of the largest ones can grow up to seven feet long or even longer. And this is a piece from Missouri of a piece of a cephalopod shell. So what you're looking at here is probably the middle section. The cone would have actually been out here like this. The, the tentacles would have been that way and the arm would have and the rest of the shell would have been this way. So these organs, these animals would have gotten quite large. The Silurian period is the next period after the um, after the Ordovician, and this is actually when we start to see land plants. Um, we don't see a lot of organisms starting to come up on land, 
but there has been a debate whether um, land plants started to appear in the Ordovician or in the Silurian. So we actually start to see some of the first land plants in the Silurian. Life was mainly still underwater, but we still start to see uh, organisms um, still in the water. And the next period is known as the Devonian. Devonian period brought fish. This is when we actually start to see a lot of development with fish and things like that. So we start to see armored fish, and we also start to see trilobites start to have um, large spikes and defense mechanisms to try to protect themselves against fish. The next period is known as the Carboniferous. And this is, of course, a name that is pretty, that sounds pretty obvious. The Carboniferous is known for having deposits of coal. And this is actually when, the, when we start to see plants and things like that forming. So here's a plant fossil from Pennsylvania. The next period is known as the um, Permian. The Permian is the last period or the last period from what we call the Paleozoic, meaning ancient life. The Paleozoic is from the, uh, is from the Cambrian all the way to the Permian. And this is when we are, start to see things like Dimetrodon and things like that. The next period is known as, of course, the Triassic period. This is when we start to see the first dinosaurs appear. The next period is known as the Jurassic period, and this is when we start to see things that are really familiar. This is when dinosaurs started to really come across. And here is a dinosaur claw, a cast of a claw, from a dinosaur called Allosaurus, that, which comes from Utah and Wyoming. The next period is known as the Cretaceous period. The Cretaceous period is where we start to see some of the more famous dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops. This is a Triceratops rib bone from Montana. This is a real triceratops rib bone. After the Cretaceous period, this is when we actually start to see another large mass extinction. This is when we actually start to see an asteroid impact that struck the Earth 66 million years ago. And this is when dinosaurs or non-avian dinosaurs, the dinosaurs are not, the dinosaurs from that, which birds are not derived from, went extinct. Birds are still dinosaurs and they're living today. They are the only form of dinosaurs living today. The next period is when we actually start to see things that look familiar to us, things that are like mammals um, and whales and things like that that come across in Earth's history. Those earlier periods are known as, is known from an a, a era known as the Cenozoic. And this is actually when we start to see things like mammoths and mastodons. And we actually start to see some of the very first humans appear at the last time of what we call the Cenozoic era. We also start to see things like mammoths and mastodons appear. This is a mammoth molar. During that time, we also start to see large sharks like this called a megalodon or Carcharicles megalodon. And this is a tooth from Georgia. So the Earth's history is very vast. We see a lot of things going on. And so the more we can find more fossils we can find, the better we can understand a long, deep history about our Earth's, about our Earth's history.